Yeah, I'll bring up a photo of the quick pick. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so this is uh, an image of the quick pick Braille contraction cards, uh, UEB. This product was released in 2019. Um, and these cards are based on the quick pick educational game series, which some of you might know about. Um, and it provides a unique play format for students who are visually impaired and blind to practice braille contractions. And it consists of a set of cards packaged in one or more plastic cases and includes a wooden tool. So quick pick braille contractions to, includes two cases of 50 cards with each case representing a cross section of braille contractions. On both sides of the cards, a braille contraction is on the top, and then four uncontracted answer choices are across the bottom. To play, the player chooses an uncontracted answer choice by inserting the wooden tool in one of the four holes in the front of the case. And if the answer is correct, the card will slide out. And if it's incorrect, the card will not pull out and the player needs to try again. And the object is to pick as many cards as possible on the first try. Um, so this game can be played at home, at school, in the car, or during any kind of downtime. It's a really good way to practice Braille when you have a spare moment. Um, so the quick pick Braille contraction cards can be used by TVIs to reinforce Braille lessons um, during a study hour and as a small group activity. It's good for online learning as an activity students can play um, and parents can help them support their Braille and literacy lessons. Um, it can also be used by an adult who may have lost vision. It's a really fun kind of easy way to practice Braille. Um, and this uh, next uh, project is called the Illinois Braille Series UEB. Um, it consists of two books, books one and two. And the Illinois Braille Series UEB is a literary Braille course for adults, and it is designed to be taken with a TVI or qualified Braille instructor. It introduces Braille code um, for people who are transitioning from print to Braille literacy and who may not want to read materials that are designed for younger children. Ages for this series can range from high school to adult learners. It is designed to be part of a comprehensive instructional program and lessons present the symbols and rules of the literary Braille code. So like I said, um, two books, one and two. Um, book one is uncontracted Braille. Um, it includes alphabet letters, numerals, basic punctuation, symbols necessary for reading uncontracted Braille text, and it really closely follows the 1992 edition. Book two is contracted Braille. Um, this was formerly two books, two and three, um, but they've been combined. It introduces contracted literary code and presents word signs, group signs, conditional punctuation, indicators and terminators needed in literary text, and teaches correctly contracted braille from beginning to end. And both books offer concise presentation of braille symbols, as well as writing drills and reading selections for practice, identical copies in print and braille, lesson materials presented in a simple format so that teachers can tailor instruction to students' needs. And the teacher is encouraged to supplement books one and two with additional materials. The individuals who prepared the 2018 editions hold advanced degrees in the education of persons with visual impairments. You turn it over to me, Rachel? Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm going to 
just for those of you who are not familiar with Building on Patterns, uh, it is a systematic, comprehensive, and balanced literacy program designed to teach young children with visual impairments to read and write using Braille. Um, what I'm going to talk about today, um, the, it has four levels. There's pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. The most recent level that came out was pre-kindergarten, and that came out in February of 2019. Now, we have a website that goes along with this program, and I'm going to bring that up. So this is the home page for Building on Patterns website. It's, it's aphbop.org, dot O-R-G. And this, this uh, home page just gives an overview of the program and has buttons across the top to go to the pages for each of the four levels of what we call BOP, B-O-P. Um, so pre-K, kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. And I'm gonna click on the pre-K button here. And then once you pick a level, then along the left-hand side, there are buttons for four different pages for each level. The first one is features and samples, which is the page that we're on right now. Second, teaching components. Third, ordering information. And the fourth is teacher resources. So um, the features and samples page, pretty self-explanatory there. It, um, this will list the features of each level of the program. And then also there are a couple different sample activities that you can download and look at just to get an idea of what the program is like. These are um, activities out of the teacher's manuals. Then the second button is teaching components. And this lists materials that, um, that are specifically for teachers. For example, the pre-K level has a teacher of students with visual impairments booklets to introduce the TBI to the pre-K level. It has a reference volume, um, and first grade and second grade also have reference volumes. And then there is uh, some information about the ass assessment piece for pre-K. And at the bottom of this teaching opponents page for all the levels, there is a scope and sequence, and it's available to download as a, as a BRF and as a PDF. Then we go back up here. The third button is the ordering information. And this lists the main components for each level of the program. For pre-kindergarten, that's the student kit, and then the print teacher kit in, or the Teacher Kit in Print and in Braille. Um, this page also lists what is in each of the kits, and there are links to the APH shopping page, pages for these components. Um, this is a, it may be, a, if, you're, if you're not familiar with building a patterns, this might be a little bit easier way to introduce to it than to just go to the APH website and type in building a patterns, because if you do that, you're going to get a, a list of all the different components in all the different levels. And this has it organized a little bit nicer. Um, also, just for pre-K, under the student kit, you'll see there's a couple things. This set of print parent letters, it says also available online after it, and also the monitoring charts and reading roundup consum consumables are also available online. And these can be found on the teacher resources, which is the fourth page um, for pre-K. So the pre-K uh, teacher resources page contains the most resources of all the levels, um, including a frequently asked questions list, some helpful videos, like an introductory video, and then some videos about using a Braille writer, including one the most recent addition to this website is a, a video about paper jams and how to, pr how to prevent them and how to deal with them if you do have paper jam. In your, in your Braille writer. So that could be helpful for parents and classroom teachers as well as the TBIs. There is also some also photos um, about hand under hand supports and a great amount of what is on this page are uh, electronic versions of materials that are included in the kits so teachers can customize information for parents and fill out data forms electronically. And that is a quick overview, and I'm going to stop sharing this. And if 
unless anybody has any questions, we can go on to talk about the coming soon products or by the end of the year. Kathy, um, are the stories in electronic format to use? Okay, so there are print books that come with the pre-K level of building up patterns. Um, and we, there are files with the braille versions of those books available to download from that, that resources page or that, yeah, that resources page. And you can emboss them onto labels and stick them in the books. Um, we didn't actually do that to the print books ourselves here because it would have added quite a bit to the cost of the kit. But those, those, the books that come with the kit, there are braille files on that teacher resources page, or on the teacher resources page, yes. How about the stories, though, in each unit? So if you're talking about the tactile storybooks, um, those are really not that useful. I mean, those, those are braille books that come with the kit. So there is a, a story for each lesson in pre-K. Or we, maybe we're talking about a different level of building on patterns. Um, the other levels of building on patterns, we do not have electronic versions available currently. Is there a product available for students who are beginning Braille at the middle school, high school level that is similar? You mentioned the Illinois Braille series. Is there anything else you, you'd recommend? So there are, we, APH doesn't have a program specifically for that age level. Um, the stories in Building on Patterns are geared towards the grade level that, that the levels are named. Um, I work with the, pe the people who work with me on Building on Patterns are all TVIs out in the field. And um, Braille 2 is something that some of them use. Um, and depending upon what your student's um, academic level is. Um, some people use I am able also, but we don't have a specific uh, product at APH for older kids. Yeah, Frances Mary uh, recommended Braille 2 in the chat. Um, someone asked, uh, can the pre-K Braille books be purchased individually as a replacement product if something happens to one of the books? You can purchase the books as a set. You can't purchase them one by one. Do you know when Braille Fundamentals will release the UEB version? I thought I had heard at Getting in Touch with Literacy last year that that was going to be sometime soon, but uh, I have not seen it up on their website. Maybe if anybody else who uh, is, is listening in knows anything about that, please put it in the chat or speak up. You can unmute, unmute yourself if you, wanna, if you wanna talk. Meantime, is there any other questions right now? No, I think you can go on. Okay. All right, Rachel, handing it over to you. Sure. Um, okay, I'm gonna talk about some uh, products that we have coming soon. Um, one of these Braille products is called Fun with Braille UEB. Um, this is an update from the eBay version of the Fun with Braille, which was released in 2006 um, and is authored by Robin Wengel. Um, and Robin helped us and collaborated on um, updating this current version. Um, and basically what we did is we updated it into UEB and um, we got rid of anything that was outdated um, and added a couple of new activities. But generally it's, it's basically the same. Um, it is a spiral bound book in braille and large type uh, consisting of 35 braille contraction activities. The book is designed for students who have been introduced to all UEB contractions and short forms and can read on at least a fourth grade level. Um, activities do not have to be done in order. A student can look at the table of contents and then back 
uh, bounce around if they want. Um, you can see an example of one of the activities. Um, there is also an index of contractions showing the activities in the book which in, in which each contraction appears, and this is included at the end of the book. Students can select activities that help them practice contractions they may be having difficulty with. Activities are fun. They're designed for practice. Um, in the print version, some activities are fully in print and others are presented in both print and sim braille. And this is so that the print reader will have some practice reading braille as well. Um, and it's also designed to help with recognition of similar braille characters such as the M symbol versus SH. Um, and a print transcription of the sim braille is also included at the end of the print version in the answer key. Um, some ways this product might be used. Um, it could be used by a TVI for students who need extra practice using braille contractions. Um, students at home looking for an entertaining way to practice braille um, as a homework assignment, as a small group activity. Um, some activities can be performed with a friend. Um, it's good for online learning students or the TVI can assign an activity from the book that the student can use independently. Um, in the classroom to reinforce braille lessons, and it could also be used for adults or anyone who has lost vision um, and has already learned braille but needs the extra practice. Do you wanna just mention what these activities that I'm showing up here are? Sure, um, yeah, I can talk about this one. Um, so activity three. Um, so I'll just read through it and just kind of explain, but it says Miss Park, Mr. Beale, and Mr. Dern, and Miss Reed all work for a company called Contraction Seekers. Um, a Contraction Seekers job is to go on expeditions to look for precious contractions. Um, and these are very, very uh, valuable, often hide in other things. Um, so then Miss um, Park is looking for AR contractions, Mr. Dern looking for ER, Miss Bealea. Um, and misread ED. Um, so then at the end, it says who has made the most money, who has made the least. So then the student can go and say, um, bed has the ED contraction. So um, Miss Reed found that one um, and kind of, kind of figure out the activity that way. Um, and, then, and then they can check on their answers in the back um, to see if they, if they got it right. Um, and this is another example. Um, so you have a list of words um, containing the letter A or the EA, con EA contraction. Um, and then the student can um, have a chance to read through and read the sim braille. Um, and like the previous activity, um, they can look in the back and, uh, and um, kind of judge how they did and, and then maybe try again. All right, so this is slated to be out by the end of the year, the, the updated fun with Braille. Yeah, it's supposed to go out in December, but you know, it's kind of, it depends, of course, but that's kind of our goal. Okay. Someone asked in the chat um, if you could talk about this smart Braille use with patterns. Um, sure, There's there is a an app for that goes along with what's taught in the current kindergarten level of building on patterns that comes with the smart brailler when you purchase it from APH. Um, and it's basically drills um, to practice the letters, words that, and contractions that are taught at that level. Um, but that, that is really, the, that is the only app that's available on the smart brailler. And there are no other plans to add additional apps to it. All right, and we have one other uh -huh. product that's or hope that's supposed to be out by the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is uh, we're calling uh, a math symbol uh, reference booklets, um, and it's in Braille and large type versions, and includes a booklet in UEB and one in Nemeth. Um, 
The Math Symbol Reference Booklet Kit um, is a resource for students and teachers who are blind and visually impaired and are using Nemeth and UEB Math. It's based on the Nemeth Code Reference Sheets. It is spiral bound across the top and is in a flip book style for quick reference. Um, the Math Symbol Reference Booklet Kit consists of a Nemeth Code Reference Booklet and then a UEB Companion Reference Booklet. And these are all packaged together. And each booklet contains a list of Nemeth or UEB math symbols along with an explanation for what each symbol represents. Um, and this is all in an easy to read table format, as you can see. Okay, I want to give you, there's three minutes left. Oh, um, Kathy, what do I do about that? Should I just speed through? Yep. Um, okay. Unless we get another question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so symbols are broken down into three levels of difficulty, beginning, intermediate, and advanced. Um, symbol subcategories for different types of mathematical exercises are also included. Um, List both Nemeth and UEB math symbols and an explanation of what each symbol represents. Um, so you also have, um, let's see. Uh, symbols are broken down into three levels of difficulty, um, and there are subcategories for each level, such as braille indicators, numeric signs and symbols, um, decimals and fractions, money, etc. Uh, so you might use this to reference new symbols and symbols that have not been used for a while. Um, it could help a teacher or transcriber when they're transcribing materials. Um, possibly when a TBI is in a gen ed math class with a Braille student and the TBI needs to replicate a math problem, um, then you can help them do that. Um, and will help with math and science course subjects. And Rachel, is the Math Symbols Kit expected to be available um, at the end of this year? Um, yes, hopefully. It, it's in production right now and our goal was to release in December. Um, so don't hold us to it, but that's, that's the plan. Hopefully the pandemic won't throw us any more curveballs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the pandemic doesn't affect anything anymore. <laughs> and, uh, Sarah, did you put our emails in, in the chat? So people, if anybody has questions that they want to email to us, you're welcome to do that. I will do that now. And Rachel, someone's asking about the reference book's not just in print, right? No, it's in Braille as well. There's a Braille version. Mm -hmm. All right, we have one minute left. Is there any, any other questions? Thank you all for coming to our session. You can stay in here at all again, or you can go on to something else. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna put the PowerPoint back up. Hi Kay, Hi, guys, it's Kay Holbrook. I just wanted to say I really enjoyed this. You did a great job. Thanks Kay. Okay, bye. All right, we're gonna let people roll in for the second session here. You guys are just seeing the PowerPoint, right? Yes. Okay, good, because I closed some things and I'm reopening them. <laughs> I just speed through that last one. <laughs> well, you did a great job, Rachel. Thanks, you did too. All right. You all are coming into the Tools for Building Braille Literacy session, or <laughs> second round. I'm sorry, whoever was talking, we couldn't hear what you were saying. I think it might have been not for us. Oh, okay.
Okay, as people are coming in, we are, we're going to be talking about some, a few of the Braille literacy products that have come out recently and a couple that are on the way and we'll take questions. We're going to put up a poll to ask people which of these products that you're familiar with. Um, and you can also choose at the bottom, there's an option to put none of the above. So if you could click on that and let us know which one of these maybe we should focus on a little bit more. We're gonna talk about the Quick Pick Braille Contractions in UEB, the Illinois Braille Series, building on patterns, mainly the website. So we don't have anything that came out in the last year on building on patterns. Um, and then also talk about a couple things that were, that are in the plans to come out by the end of 2020. Fun with Braille in UEB and math symbol reference booklets in UEB and Nemeth. Keep people maybe one more minute to fill out the poll and, and get joined here. And just like all the other sessions, you can put questions in the chat or raise your hand and let us know if you want to ask a question verbally. And I guess I should go ahead and, um, you wanna do introductions while we're waiting for the poll to close, Rachel? Sure. Um, I'm Rachel Bishop. Um, I'm a product development our product, oh my God, product development project leader here at APH um, and specialize in Braille products. And um, I'm also NLS certified Braille transcriber. And I am Kathy Semps Graves, the Braille Literacy Project Leader. And my main project is, is the Building on Patterns curriculum. We are currently working on revising the kindergarten level. And we have the results of the poll and we have 16% people familiar with quick pick broad contractions, 0% familiar with the Illinois Braille series, 48% familiar with building out patterns, 10% familiar with fun with Braille, and 26% say none of the above. So looks like we're gonna hopefully be giving you some good information here today. All right, Rachel's gonna start us off talking about the quick pick. Um, so Quick Pick Braille Contraction Cards, UEB, um, was released in 2019. Um, and the Quick Pick Braille Contraction Cards are based on the Quick Pick Educational Game Series. Um, it provides a unique play format for students who are visually impaired and blind to practice Braille contractions. It consists of a set of cards packaged in one or more plastic cases and includes a wooden tool. Quick Pick Braille Contractions includes two cases of 50 cards, with each case representing a cross-section of Braille contractions. On both sides of the cards, a Braille contraction is on the top, and four uncontracted answer choices are across the bottom. So you can kind of see that in the picture. Um, to play, the player chooses an uncontracted answer choice by inserting the wooden tool in one of four holes in the front of the case. If the answer is correct, the card will slide out. If incorrect, the card will not pull out and the player should try again. And the object is to quick pick as many cards as possible on the first try. And the game can be played at home, at school, in the car, or during any kind of downtime. It's a great way to practice Braille when you have a spare moment or for a student to practice Braille. Um, you, a quick pick can be used by TVIs to reinforce Braille lessons during a study hour. Um, it can be used as a small group activity. It's good for online learning as an activity that students can play um, and parents can support and help them with Braille literacy lessons. Um, it can also be used by adults who may have lost vision. Um, so Illinois Braille series, um, UEB books one and two. Yeah, so Rachel, this is the one nobody knew anything about, so we may want to spend a little bit of 
extra okay. time on it. <laughs> cool. Um, you'll have lots of questions. That's good. Um, so Illinois Braille Series UEB Books 1 and 2, you can see um, a picture of the front of the book there. Um, this is a series that came out in 92, I believe, and we've um, revamped it and um, uh, rewritten it in UEB. Uh, the Illinois Braille Series UEB is a literary Braille course for adults and is designed to be taken with a TVI or qualified Braille instructor. It introduces Braille code for people transitioning from print to Braille who may not want to read materials designed for young children. Ages for the series can range from high school to adult learners. It is designed to be part of a comprehensive instructional program and lessons pre present the symbols and rules of the literary Braille code. Um, the series consists of two books, one and two. Um, book one is uncontracted Braille. Uh, it includes alphabet letters, numerals, basic punctuation, um, symbols necessary for reading uncontracted Braille text, and closely follows the 92 edition. Book, con book two is contracted Braille, um, formerly, it was book two and three, but we've combined them. It introduces contracted literary code and presents word signs, group signs, conditional punctuation, indicators and terminators needed in literary text, um, and teaches correctly contracted Braille from beginning to end. Both books offer concise presentation of Braille symbols, as well as writing drills and reading selections for practice, identical copies in print and Braille, uh, lesson materials presented in a simple format so that teachers can tailor instruction to a student's needs. Um, you can see uh, an example there. The teacher is encouraged to supplement books one and two with additional materials. Individuals who prepared um, this edition hold advanced degrees in the education of persons with visual impairments. Rachel, can you begin with book two if you're already if you're already all set with uncontracted basics? Uh, yeah, I don't see why not. Is it that yeah, if you're if you're already caught up. Okay, great. That'd be fine. Is there a, a an index that shows everything that's taught in the book two book one? I mean, sorry. Um, I don't actually know. <laughs> I'll check on that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, shoot. All right. Any other questions about Illinois Braille? All right. Then I am going to talk about building on patterns. And for those of you who are not familiar with it, um, building on patterns is a systematic, comprehensive, and balanced literacy program designed to teach young children with visual impairments to read and write using Braille. There are four levels of building on patterns, pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. And the most recent addition to the building on patterns group is the pre-K level, and that came out in February of 2019. So I am going to go ahead and screen share the website for Building on Patterns. So this is, pairs with all four levels of the program and it has some supplemental and electronic materials with it as well. Um, the home page gives an overview of the program and has buttons across the top to go to the pages for each of the four levels of BOP. As I said, pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. And I'm going to click on the pre-K button. And so for each level, there are four pages. And there are buttons to get to those along the left-hand side here. And those four different pages are features and samples, teaching components, ordering information, and teacher resources. The features and samples page, which is the one that we're on for pre-K, of course, it's kind of self-explanatory. It talks about the features of the program for pre-K. Um, the features are speaking and listening, knowledge and concept development, phonological and phonemic awareness, reading, writing, 
a variety of tactile graphics, and enrichment, enri enrichment activities incorporating poetry, arts, and crafts, music, and movement. And then in, on, for each level, there are two different sample activities that you can download. Um, these are PDF files. And this just gives someone who's not familiar with uh, the program an example of, of some of the activities that are included. These are pulled directly from the teacher's manuals. Then the second page is the teaching components page. And this page describes material specifically for teachers. For example, pre-kindergarten has a TSVI booklet that introduces the teacher to the program and has a reference volume. Um, first grade and second grade also have reference volumes. It has uh, information about the, the assessment portion of the pre-kindergarten level. There's a separate booklet for that in the kit. Um, and then for each level there, the last thing on this page is the scope and sequence. And you can download scope and sequence from here as a BRF file or as a PDF. Then we'll go on to the third page, which is ordering information. And this page lists all the main components of each level. For example, for pre-kindergarten, that is the student kit, and then the teacher kit in print and in braille. This page also lists what's in each of the kits, and there are links to the APH shopping pages for these components. For someone who's not um, familiar with building on patterns, this is probably a better place to start than just going to the APH website and typing in building on patterns. Because if you do that, you're gonna get a whole bunch of entries of all the different components that are available for all the different levels. And this breaks it down a little bit easier to comprehend. Um, you'll see on this page for the, under the student kit for pre-K, there are two things, the set of print parent letters and the monitoring charts and reading roundup consumables that it says also available online. And those things are available online under the teacher resources page which is the fourth page for each of the levels. And the pre-kindergarten re teacher resources page contains the most resources of all the levels, including a fre frequently asked questions list, some helpful videos. We've got one that just introduces all the parts of the program, uh, a link to loading paper and introduction to the Perkins Brailler, and the most recent addition to this website is a video about how to fix a paper jam in a Braille writer and also tips on how to prevent paper jams. We also have a section on hand under hand support and then a whole bunch of different electronic files that you can download from that relate to the pre-K level. And this includes electronic versions of materials included in the kits so teachers can customize information for parents and fill out data forms electronically. One other thing that got asked about in the first round of this session was uh, if there were braille files for the books that come with the kit. Um, so for pre-K, there is a print picture book that matches up with each lesson in the program. And at the bottom of this page, there is a section called Braille Labels for Children's Books. And this is where you can download a BRF file with the text for each of those print books that come in the kit. Um, and, print, and you can print labels and put them into the book if you want to. Um, we did not do that at APH here because it would have added a, a significant amount of cost to the kit. So I'm gonna stop sharing and see if there's any questions about this. Uh, there are there are um, monitoring sheets for uh, pre-K, um, and there and there are lesson monitoring sheets for um, first grade and second grade as well. Um, I see, somebody asked about that. Um, so the question about teacher checklist for monitoring progress. I think that was about Illinois Braille. Which oh, okay. Answer that question. Um, I I have to look at that. I'm I don't think so. I, I'm not sure. All right. Then we should go on and 
talk about a couple things that we are hoping, fingers crossed, to get out by the end of this year. All right. Um, so a couple of products that are coming up are um, Fun with Braille UEB and then Math Symbol Reference Booklets, which is based on Nemeth Code Reference Sheets. Um, so Fun with Braille UEB, this is an update from the eBay version of Fun with Braille, which was released in 2006 and is authored by Robin Wingell. Um, and Robin helped us to um, develop this update. Um, it was uh, not only retranslated into UEB, but we also um, made some updates on outdated material and added some activities. Essentially, though, it's the same. Um, it's a spiral bound book in Braille and large type consisting of 35 Braille contraction activities. The book is designed for students who have been introduced to all UEB contractions in short forms um, and can also read on at least a fourth grade level. Uh, activities do not have to be done in order. A student can look at the table of contents, which is included, and bounce around where needed. Um, there's also an index of contractions showing the activities um, in which each contraction appears, and this is included at the end of the book. Students can select activities that help them practice contractions that they may be having difficulty with. Activities are fun and designed for practice. In the print version, some activities are fully in print and others are presented in print with SimBraille um, so that the print reader will have practice reading Braille as well. Um, and this will help with recognition of similar Braille characters, such as the M symbol versus the SH symbol. A uh, print transcription of the SIM Braille is also included at the end of the print version in the answer key. Um, some ways you might use this product. Um, it can be used by TVIs for students who need extra practice using Braille contractions. Um, students at home looking for an entertaining way to practice Braille. Uh, could be used as a homework assignment or a small group activity. Um, some activities can be performed with a friend. It's great for online learning. Students or a TVI can assign an activity from the book and that the student can use it and practice independently. Um, can also be used in the classroom to reinforce Braille lessons um, or for adults or anyone who has lost vision and has learned Braille. Um, but needs the extra practice. Um, here's an ex uh, example of activity three. Um, this is called Contraction Seekers. Um, so as you can see, um, each, uh, each Contraction Seeker specializes in finding a specific contraction um, and that corresponds with their name. So you have Mr. Park is looking for AR contractions and Mr. Dern is looking for ER, um, et cetera. Um, and then you have a list of words um, and you would ask uh, which contractions does Mr. Park find and which does Mr. Dern find um, and who found the most. So that's kind of an example of, of one of the activities in the book. Um, here's another activity. Um, so this is an, an example of how Symbrel can be used. Um, so um, each word contains either the letter A or the EA contraction and has a number written after it. Um, there are five words with the EA contraction. Um, add the numbers that are after all of the words with the EA contraction. Um, and then you should come up with the number 100. So the student has to be able to identify that contraction in Braille um, and then complete the activity. Okay. So that's fun with Braille. Um, the next thing we have coming, coming up is the math symbol reference booklets. Um, this is in Braille and large print um, and it comes with two booklets. Uh, one is in UEB and one is in Nemeth, and these are packaged together, so you'll both get it, you'll get them both. Um, 
So Math Symbols Reference Booklets Kit is a resource for students and teachers who are blind or visually impaired and are using NAMETH and UAB Math. It's based on the NAMETH Code reference sheets, but um, it's a little bit different, actually quite a bit different. It's spiral bound across the top and it's designed in a flipbook style for quick and easy reference. Um, the Math Symbol Reference Booklets consists of the Nemeth Code Reference Booklet and the UEB Companion Reference Booklet. And each booklet contains a list of Nemeth or UEB math symbols, along with an explanation of what each symbol represents. And this is all in an easy to read table format. Um, so you can see we have um, Nemeth Code beginning, um, and then under that is Braille indicators. Um, so you have punctuation indicator, um, and then an example of the print symbol and an example of the Nemeth symbol next to it. Um, so the symbols are broken down, as you can see, into three levels of difficulty, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Um, symbol subcategories for different types of mathematical exercises are also included. So some features. Um, lists of Nemeth code and UEB math symbols and an explanation of what each symbol represents. Um, symbols broken down into three levels of difficulty, uh, as I said, beginning, intermediate, and advanced. Um, syllab symbols relevant for all ages and grade levels. Um, and then symbol subcategories for each level, um, such as uh, braille indicators, numeric signs and symbols. Um, here we have uh, signs and symbols of operations, signs and symbols of grouping. There's also uh, decimals and fractions, money, temperature, uh, shapes, angles, lines, and rays, level indicators, arrows, and the Greek alphabet. Okay. Um, and some ways that this might be used, um, it, could be used to reference new symbols and symbols that have not been used for a while um, to help students identify those symbols, um, to help teachers and transcribers when they're tr transcribing materials. Um, maybe when a TBI is in a gen ed math class um, to help replicate a math problem that might be in print, the teacher may have written in print. Um, and that's it. Rachel, someone had asked about the Illinois Braille series. Uh, what reading level is it? Um, it is an, a, written for adults. Um, so I, it, it's mature enough that I think a high school student could use it, but it's designed for, uh, for someone probably college level or above. OK, thank you. I muted myself. We have the floor open now if anybody has any other questions. And if you all don't, I have one I can throw out to you. Um, I think you've probably done this before in some of the other sessions. You can put a Y or an N in the chat as a, a yes or a no response. And this is about, this is just a, this is just a, a question. There's no, nothing in the plans yet, but uh, um wanted to find out if people think it, it would be useful or not to have the op the option to purchase capital letter tiles of, for the word playhouse so if you could put a yes or a no in the chat if you think that having capital letter tiles an option to purchase and what your thought is about that so we're getting a few whys and uh yes the Reference math symbols, uh, the reference booklets for the math symbols, we're hoping to have those out in by the end of this year, by the end of 2020. That's what it's scheduled for, just as long as we don't have any more, any kind of curveballs from, from the pandemic or anything. Yeah. And just to let you know, there's four minutes left. And it looks like mostly wise in the chat. That's good to see. 
There's one and I'm not seeing that. She sent it to me privately. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> more wise. Yeah, if we get some, we might try and do a, a, a broader survey if, if people are generally um, interested in that and see if it's a possibility of, of producing those. And I can show a little bit more about the BOP website if people are interested in that. One thing I, I Sarah put it in the chat, um, but, um, oops, that's not the right share. Um, I did not tell you, the uh, URL is www.aphbop.org. And that is the, that's how you get to the BOP website. I'll bring that back up here again. Um, and so this is the pre-K um, teacher resources page again. And one thing I wanted to point out on, on here is that in addition to having, sorry, we're seeing this, right? Yes. Okay. In addition to having electronic versions of the, the monitoring charts and the, what we call the reading roundup charts, and this is your in assessment for pre-K, we, we have a fun activity to go with that. Um, there are samples of filled in charts here. Um, um, so teachers want to get an idea of how to use these. You can download a PDF or a Word version of these charts. Um, we also have the directions for the APH digital recording device, which comes with the kit, um, but they're really small. So we, we put the electronic version up here so, so people can read them who, without a magnifying glass. Um, and there are audio files of some of the songs that don't have, that aren't that familiar, um, that are included in the lessons. And we didn't put in a recording of, of uh, Wheels on the Bus because we think people, most, most people know that, but it's another resource up there. Do we have some other, looks like we got one minute left. All right, and, and uh, again, Sarah put our emails in the chat if anybody has questions outside of this discussion. Thank you very much for coming. So you'll get a, the ending, the closing code will be given at the end of your 3C section, session, so your next session. The opening code is um, stronger. It's the same as 3A. All right, I'm going to put the PowerPoint back up. All right, so as people are coming in, this is the Tools for Building Braille Literacy session. 
session 3C. Give people just a little bit more time to, to come on in. As people are coming in, we would like to get some information from you all on, on how familiar you are with what we're going to talk about so we know what to, to focus on more. Um, we're going to put up a poll. And it, you have the option to select as many of these items under here as you would like. Um, there is also an option at the bottom for none of the above if you're not familiar with any of these products. We're going to be talking about quick pick braille contractions in UEB, the Illinois Braille series, building on patterns, and uh, mainly about the building on patterns website because we actually haven't had anything new come out this year um, or the last year for building on patterns. Um, and then we're going to talk about a couple things that are in the plans to hopefully come out by the end of 2020, so maybe sometime in December. Um, that is Fun with Braille updated to UEB and the Math Symbol Reference Booklets, UEB and Nemeth. Give people a minute here to click in their responses. And in the meantime, uh, Rachel, want to go ahead and do introductions? Sure. Um, I'm Rachel Bishop. I'm a project leader here at APH, specializing in Braille products. Um, I'm also an NLS certified Braille transcriber. And I am Kathy Semph Graves, the Braille Literacy Project Leader. And uh, the main project that I work on is building on patterns. We're currently uh, working on revising the kindergarten level of the program. It's like poll only allowing one choice, huh? This one must not got set up correctly. Hmm. All right, maybe we should go ahead and close it out then, Sarah or Kristen, whoever's running it. Yep. There's some. Okay, that's so pretty good. Um, we have 13% familiar, only 13% familiar with Quick Pick Braille contractions, 19% Illinois Braille series, 50% building on patterns, 6% fun with Braille. That's our low one this time, and 13, none of the above. All right, so we're going to talk about these things, um, and we'll take questions throughout. Okay. Now, Rachel's going to start us off. Uh, yep. Uh, I'll start us off uh, with Quick Pick Braille Contraction Cards, UEB. Um, this was, product was released in 2019. Um, the Quick Pick Braille contraction cards are based on the Quick Pick educational game series um, and provide a unique play format for students who are visually impaired and blind to practice Braille contractions. Um, so you can see in the image uh, what the product look, look, looks like. Um, it consists of a set of cards packaged in one or more plastic cases and includes a wooden tool. Quick Pick Braille Contractions includes two cases of 50 cards, with each case representing a cross-section of Braille contractions. On both sides of the cards, a Braille contraction is on the top, and four uncontracted answer choices are across the bottom. To play, the player chooses an uncontracted answer choice by inserting a wooden tool in one of four holes in the front of the case. If the answer is correct, the card will slide out. And if it's incorrect, the card will not pull out and the player should try again. And the object is to quick pick as many cards as possible on the first try. And the game can be played at home, at school, in the car, or during any kind of downtime. It's a great way to practice Braille when you have a spare moment. Um, and where can you use Quick Pick? Um, it can be used by TVIs to reinforce Braille lessons during a study hour, during a small group activity. It's good for online learning as an activity students can play um, and parents can help them support Braille and literacy lessons. Um, and also for adults who may have lost vision. All right. Um, 
The next product we had released was the Illinois Braille series UEB one, books one and two. Um, this is an image of the book here. The Illinois Braille series UEB is a literary Braille course for adults and is designed to be taken with a TVI or qual qualified Braille instructor. Um, it was first developed in or the last uh, the last book came out in 92 and then we've updated it. It introduces Braille code for people transitioning from print to Braille literacy who may not want to read materials designed for young children. Um, ages for this series can range from high school to adult learners and it's designed to be part of a comprehensive instructional program. Lessons represent the symbols and rules of the literary Braille code. Um, the series consists of two books, books one and two. Book one contains uncontracted Braille. Um, it includes alphabet letters, numerals, basic punctuation, symbols necessary for reading uncontracted Braille text, and very closely follows the 92 edition. Book two contains contracted Braille. It was formerly books one and three, or two and three, um, and those were combined into one book. It introduces contracted literary code and presents word signs, group signs, conditional punctuation, indicators and terminators needed in literary text, teaches correctly contracted braille from beginning to end. And both books offer a concise presentation of braille symbols, as well as writing drills and reading selections for practice identical copies in print and braille, lesson materials presented in a simple format so that teachers can tailor instructions to a student's needs. Um, the teacher is also encouraged to supplement books one and two with additional materials. Um, and these books were prepared in, uh, uh, by people who hold advanced degrees in the education of persons with visual impairments. And there's another example. Okay, any questions about QuickPick or Illinois Braille? All right, I'm gonna talk about building on patterns then. Um, so those of you not familiar with it, building on patterns is a systematic, comprehensive and balanced literacy program designed to teach young children with visual impairments to read and write using Braille. And there are uh, four levels of the program. I'm gonna go ahead and share the website with you all. Back to the main page. All right, so the four levels are pre-kindergarten or pre-K, kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. The homepage here um, of the Building on Patterns website is at aphbop.org or .org. And the uh, first page here just gives an overview of the program and has buttons across the top to go to the pages for each of the four levels of what we call BOP, pre-kindergarten, kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. And I'm going to select the pre-K button. And then for each level, there are four different pages. And there are buttons along the side for those four pages. The first one is features and samples. The second one is teaching components. The third one is ordering information. And the fourth is teacher resources. The features and samples page is what we're on. Gives a little overview of the type of things that are in the level. And for pre-kindergarten, that includes um, activities, activities to address speaking and listening knowledge and concept development, phonological and phonemic awareness, reading, writing, a variety of tactile graphics, and enrichment activities incorporating poetry, arts and crafts, music and movement. And also at the bottom of this page for each level, there are a couple of different sample activities that you can download uh, PDF files. These come directly out of the teacher's manual so you can get an idea of what the lessons look like. The next page is the features and, or sorry, is the teaching components page. And the these pages describe materials specifically for teachers. 
For example, pre-kindergarten has a TSVI booklet to give the TBI some, an overview of the uh, level and how to work with the other people on the child's IEP team. Um, there's a reference volume. Uh, there's also a reference volume for first grade and for second grade. There's information about the assessment component of pre-K. And then at the bottom of this page, and also for the other three levels of BOP, there is uh, the scope and sequence. And you can download the scope and sequence as a BRF file or as a PDF file. And the third page is ordering information. And this page lists the main components of, for each level. For pre-kindergarten, that's the student kit and the teacher kits in print and in braille. This page also lists what is in each of the kits and there are links to the APH shopping pages for these components. Um, for people not familiar with building on patterns, this gives you a, maybe a little bit better overview than if you were to go to the APH website and just type in building on patterns because if you do that, it will bring up all the different components from all the different levels. And this uh, breaks it down a little bit better for, for you to see what's included. Um, you'll see under the student kit on this page, the, there's a, it says also available online after the sent of print parent letters and after the monitoring charts and reading roundup consumables. And those are available online under the, on the teacher resources page, which is the fourth page, fourth page for each level. The pre-kindergarten teacher resources page contains the most resources of all the levels, including a frequently asked questions list, some helpful videos. There's one that uh, gives an overview of the materials in the program, and there's one about uh, that's uh, linked to an introduction to the Perkins Brailler and how to load paper. The most recent addition to this, this website is a video about how to fix a paper jam in a braille writer and also has tips about how to prevent a paper jam. And this can be shared with with parents and classroom teachers, anybody else who's working with a student. There also is a section on hand under hand support and then quite a few electronic files um, uh, that are electronic versions of materials included in the kit so that you teachers can customize information for parents and fill out data forms electronically. Also at the very end of this page, there is a list of a section called Braille Labels for Children's Books. And for pre-K, there is a print picture book that goes with each lesson. There is a Braille version of that book also included in the kit. But if you wanted to add labels to the print books so that you have a print braille book, you can download these files from this section and print them onto labels and put them in the books. We did not do that here at APH because it would have made the, the kit significantly more expensive. I'm going to stop sharing and see if we've got any questions. Okay, then I think we will go ahead and move on to Rachel telling us about some things that we're hoping to come out by the end of 2020, okay? hopefully sometime in December. Sure. Okay, um, so two products that are coming up are Fun with Braille UEB um, and then Math Symbols, Math Symbol Reference Booklets, which is based on the Nemeth Code reference sheets. So Fun with Braille UEB, um, this is an update from the eBay version of Fun with Braille, which was released in 2006 um, and is written by Robin Wingel. Um, and Robin helped us to update this current version. It is a spiral bound book in Braille and large type consisting of 35 Braille contraction activities. The book is designed for students who have been introduced to all UEB contractions in short forms and can read on at least a fourth grade level. Activities do not have to be done in order. A student can look at the table of contents and bounce around the book if they need to. 
There is also an index of contractions showing the activities in which each contraction appears, and this is included at the end of the book. Students can select activities that help them practice contractions they may have been having difficulty with. Activities are fun and designed for practice. In the print version, some activities are fully in print and others are presented in print with sim braille. Um, so that the print reader will have practice reading braille as well. Um, you can see in act activity 18 an example of this. Um, and this will help with recognition of similar braille characters uh, such as M versus SH. Um, in this case, you have A versus the EA contraction. Um, a print transcription of the sim braille is also included at the end of the book in the answer key. Ways the product might be used uh, could be used by TBIs for students who need extra practice using braille contractions, students at home looking for an entertaining way to practice braille, as a homework assignment, um, as a small group activity, some activities can be performed with a friend. It's good for online learning. A student or TBI can, ex uh, can get an activity from the book and the student can uh, figure out the activity independently. It can also be used in the classroom to reinforce braille lessons uh, or for adults or anyone who has lost vision and has learned braille but needs extra practice. Um, and the next uh, product that's coming up is called Math Symbol Reference Booklets. Um, do you want me to wait? Yeah, there you go. Cool. Um, it's uh, in Braille and large type versions um, in UEB and Nemeth. And the Math Symbol Reference Booklets kit is a resource for students and teachers who are blind um, or visually impaired and are using Nemeth and UEB Math. It's based on the Nemeth Code reference sheets. Um, it is spiral bound across the top in a flip, flip book style for quick reference. So Math Symbol Reference Booklets kits consist of the Nemeth Code reference booklet and the UEB Companion Reference Booklet and these are packaged together. They're separate booklets, but they come together. And each booklet contains a list of Nemeth or UEB math symbols, along with an explanation for what each symbol represents. And all of this is in an easy to read table format. The symbols are broken down into three levels of difficulty. Um, you can see in this picture, we have a beginning level um, beginner, intermediate, and advanced, and symbol subcategories for different types of mathematical exercises are also included. So the symbol subcategory here would be braille indicators, and you can see we have under that punctuation indicator, um, and then an example of the print symbol of the punctuation indicator, and then the Nemeth symbol next to that. So these, the features of the product include lists of both Nemeth and UEB math symbols, and an explanation of what each symbol represents, symbols broken down into three levels of difficulty, symbols relevant for all ages and grade levels, symbol subcategories for each level, such as uh, braille indicators, numeric signs and symbols, signs and symbols of comparison, signs and symbols of omission, signs and symbols of operation, and also decimals and fractions, money, temperature, signs and symbols of grouping, shapes, angles, lines, and rays, level indicators, arrows, and also the Greek alphabet. Um, and this product might be used to reinforce new symbols and symbols that have not been used for a while um, to, or help teachers and transcribers when they're transcribing materials. Um, or also when a TVI is in a gen ed math class with a braille student and needs to transcribe the math problem from the print. Okay. 
but just showing some examples for, for each of the three levels for each of the, the yeah. booklets. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, now we can open it up for questions. And if nobody has any question, then I'm gonna ask you all one. Hmm. So this is something we're just thinking about. There's no particular plan in place, but I'm just, just trying to get a feel from people about what they think about this. Um, if you're familiar with the word playhouse and the tiles that come with that, do you think, put, it, put a yes, a Y in the chat if you, if you think, if your answer is yes, and an N in the chat if your answer is no. Would it be useful or not, would it be useful, I guess, that to have the option to purchase a set of capital letter tiles to go along with the other word playhouse tiles? So put a yes if you think that that's something you would use and put an N if you think, no, that's, that's not really something I see myself using. Gotten a couple whys. Okay, guys, I got a frog. I'm going to have to mute. Oh. Does anyone else have a response? Okay, so we have another yes. We have three yeses so far. All right. So, sorry about that. I'm not used to talking this much. <laughs> um, I'm gonna try and bring the Building on Patterns website back up again, just to give you all a little more information since we have a few more minutes, unless there's other, que unless there's questions people have. I'm gonna go back to the pre-K resources page, teacher resources. <clears throat> and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, Sarah, can, is there any chance you could jump in and <laughs> just talk about what's here? <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we've got the uh, monitoring charts and reading roundup consumables. So these are the um, assessment pieces and you can, um, or monitoring pieces, and you can uh, download it by clicking on these links here. So there's the ongoing monitoring charts, and that includes the anecdotal notes page, the Braille writer skills, loading and removing paper, uh, book and page orientation, name writing, hand and finger movements for writing, hand and finger movements for reading, alphabet knowledge summary checklist. Then there's the reading roundup charts, um, so the reading roundup lessons are lessons 10, 17, 25, and 32. And that includes the compiled reflections from reading roundup lessons and monitoring charts, reading roundup progress chart, the um, accumulated record, the reading roundup summary and planning chart. Then there's the um, news and notes for parents. And this ha it has the uh, word file link and the link to the BRF. Below that you have the sample filled in chart. So um, it's just an example of these charts filled in. So you can look at how they should be filled out. There are options on how they can be filled out. Yes. Teacher, teachers can use them however it works best for them. Right. So there's a PDF and a Word file for the ongoing monitoring charts and the reading roundup charts. All right, I think I can talk now. Um, <laughs> And then one other thing I wanted to point out on here is that there's a section called audio files and this includes recordings of some of the songs that are included in the lessons that aren't as familiar to people. We didn't include things like uh, Wheels on the Bus or the Itsy Bitsy Spider or anything like that, but uh, there are a few songs that are probably not as familiar to people and we have one of our uh, teachers who are one of the writers for Building on Patterns, she is a professional singer and she recorded these for us. 
so that I'll help the teachers to, to sing along. All right, we have four minutes left, and I know probably a lot of people are going to want to get to this last general session. So does anybody have any other questions? All right. Sarah put the closing code in the chat. And so I'll let people go. Thank you very much for coming to our session. Hope you have enjoyed your inner meeting and well, there's still a little bit, little bit to go. Some good stuff tonight. Thank you, Kathy. Thank and you. Good job. I'll go ahead and end the meeting. Is that cool? We might just give people a minute to get the closing code just in case they haven't been watching the participants countdown. I think the thing is like having the opening code and the closing code for like sessions, like the block of sessions was like confusing for a lot of people. Yeah, it was uh, they were talking about it in teams, but I don't know. If it has to be virtual next year, then maybe we can suggest something different. Yeah, it was done differently in our sessions just before yours, our three sessions that I was monitoring for uh, Susan Sullivan. Aliyah gave it every time. The cl opening and closing? I think so. Yeah, we're, we weren't supposed to, but I don't know. I think a lot of things too is just kind of like miscommunication as well. I mean, but okay, there are <laughs> we should we should go ahead and shut this down. Goodbye, you guys.